are you too busy in the mornings that you end up skipping breakfast? And someone told you that is actually really good for your health. Well, I'm here to tell you that you skipping breakfast may actually be harming you, harming your health, your body, right? Let's get into it. Into today's episode, I'm going to talk about the importance of breakfast for busy women. And then I'm going to go and talk about why it is important not to skip breakfast with some scientific evidence. And then I'm going to give you three quick easy and sustainable healthy breakfast ideas that you can whiz up in the morning and enjoy and ensure that you are not harming your health. Welcome to the Natural Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. The Natural Podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Absolutely love, 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 and appreciate your support. I'm a qualified naturopath with a passion for health, business, and overall success. And here on Mondays on the Natural Podcast, I'm here to provide you simple, savvy, and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. Well, if you heard me say at the start, today's episode is going to be all about skipping breakfast. And I'm not going to talk about the benefits of skipping breakfast. I'm going to talk about the disadvantages and how that may be affecting your health, right? Let's get into it. This is such an exciting episode because I used to believe that skipping breakfast was doing me good. I used to be like, you know what? If I skip breakfast, that means I get to eat more at lunch. That means I get to eat more at dinner. That means, you know, I save those calories and, you know, I'm I'm on an empty stomach and therefore I've got a flat stomach in the morning and I feel amazing and I weigh myself and I look amazing. But hold up. That is not what is happening inside of your body, especially if you're a busy business woman or a busy woman whatsoever, right? Because as this is what's going to happen, right? As the alarm goes off, you're rushing and preparing yourself for the busy day ahead, you know? And by the time that you've brushed your teeth, you've gone for a walk or you've gone to the gym, you showered, you are already exhausted. Does that sound familiar? It definitely sounds familiar to me. It's no wonder that many businesswomen actually end up skipping breakfast and just grabbing a coffee on the go, which is drunk in the car, and then on the way to work or on the way to drop with the kids or whatsoever. But there are so many reasons why this is a bad habit for your health, right? Look, I know that you're busy. I'm busy too. We are all absolutely busy. And the last thing that we want to think about is preparing an actual breakfast, right? Which, But if you're already busy, it already means that your nervous system is overactive, which then means you're overloaded and you're already in a sympathetic nervous system. And by being in a sympathetic nervous system, it already means that you're revved up. Your nervous system is just running through and burning through all of your minerals, all of your vitamins like crazy. And if you don't eat any food, those minerals and vitamins, they get depleted dramatically. And then they're not getting restored because how do we get our minerals and vitamins? Through food, right? What I hear all the time is, I am too busy to eat in the morning, so I just eat lunch. Plus fasting is really good for me. Wrong wrong, wrong. I am not saying fasting is not amazing. I'm here talking to you today about why skipping breakfast is dangerous for busy women. I'm not talking about fasting and I'm going to talk about probably fasting another time, right? But according to a 2013 study in the American Journey of Health Behavior, the most frequent reported barrier to healthfully eating is a lack of time. Such time constraints may have consequences on weight gain and obesity, which, as we know, is a huge, huge phenomenon all around the world, especially in Australia and in America. Perceived lack of time for healthy eating is named as a common reason for eating fast food, convenience food, takeaway, packaged, and has been found to be associated with lower fruit and vegetable and greater fast food consumption. 
So in inconsistent meal patterns, particularly skipping breakfast, are associated with poorer diet quality and higher body weight and may also pre uh, prevent weight maintenance. So what this study essentially was saying is the fact that we're skipping breakfast, we're more likely to get a takeaway food that's not beneficial for us, therefore we're more likely to gain weight and be obese, right? And that has its downside effects to our health as it is. So skipping breakfast has been considered an important determinant as an unhealthy lifestyle that may serve as a proxy factor for other health risk behaviors such as alcohol use, smoking, and a sedentary lifestyle on the couch, <laughs> as well as low educational attainment, mood changes, and depressive symptoms. It has also been associated with a lower quality of life and chronic stress, which may increase, which may in turn increase the lifetime risk of cardiometabolic disease. So you're here, so you're probably like, um, what is all this, right? So what I'm in my next segment, in the next part, what I'm going to talk about is actually why it's important not to skip breakfast. What can actually happen inside of your body, and what what diseases or what health effects it may look like if you end up skipping breakfast. And I know you might, you probably don't want to hear this. You probably don't want to hear me say you need to eat breakfast because you've heard there's so much media out there, and there's so many people saying, you know, skip breakfast, don't worry about breakfast, and you're like, yes. Finally, someone talking my talk, I need to skip breakfast. But they don't tell you what happens, what may happen to your body if you skip this breakfast. Okay, they don't tell you this. They only tell you, oh, you should do it, it's all good for you. But let's go into what can actually happen to your body and to your health if you skip breakfast. So let's talk about why is it important not to skip breakfast. Number one, diabetes. Okay, you probably all heard about diabetes. You know what diabetes is. Well, skipping breakfast may increase a woman's diabetes risk, according to a study published this month in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Women who ate breakfast an average to zero to six times per week were at a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes than women who ate breakfast every day. Okay. So women who ate breakfast every day had a much lower risk of getting type 2 diabetes. We know type 2 diabetes is a huge, huge, huge issue here in Australia and also in the US. But what I want to tell you is, is the thing is, is you may be in your late 20s, early 30s, and you may be skipping breakfast now and you might not be getting diabetes. But all of this is going to catch up to you when you may get to your 40s, to your 50s, and then, bam, there comes diabetes knocking on the door. Number two, heart disease. No one wants to get heart disease, right? A 2019 study looked at into skipping breakfast and the risk of cardiovascular disease and death. I know, very morbid, right? But the magnitude of associations were variable across studies, but overall suggested that people who skip breakfast may be at a greater risk of experiencing adverse health outcomes compared to people who regularly consume breakfast. Speci specifically, they found that people who regularly skip breakfast were about 21% more likely to suffer a CVD event, cardiovascular disease event or die from it. And 32% were more likely to die from all causes than people who ate regularly bre breakfast regularly. This is dramatic. I mean, if you have anyone in your family who may have cardiovascular issues or heart disease, or you know, it's something that you have a predisposition to, or you want to avoid it, well, how about eating breakfast? That, how simple is that? Don't worry about taking this pill, that pill. How about just eating breakfast? It actually may reduce your chance of getting cardiovascular disease. But not only does that, it's saying death, mobility overall. Absolutely crazy when I read this study. Number three, memory. I mean, we all want our memory to be on point to work and be there when we need it, right? A 2015 Journal of American Dietetic Association reviewed on 42 breakfast-related studies found that eating breakfast is likely to improve cognitive function related to memory and test grades. Eating breakfast 
is a smart move, they are saying in this study, right? So you can assist with your memory. And how? Well, when you think about the minerals and vitamins that are getting depleted dramatically from you being stressed out, you know, re re ramping them and getting them back into your body may assist your memory, right? Another one which I know that you all want to hear about is weight loss. And if, and this may be really challenging your beliefs because by eating less, we believe eating less means we weigh less. Eating less means we lose weight. No, right? That's not the case. That's not the case. That is absolutely not the case. That's a very shallow view of weight loss. There is so much more in depth about weight loss that needs to go into, right? In a recent study, people who ate breakfast as their largest meal, this is important because I don't don't really talk about this much in this podcast, but this study says people who ate breakfast as their largest meal lost an average of 17.8 pounds, which interprets to about eight kilos over three months. That is a lot, right? The other participants consumed the same amount of calories per day, but ate most of their calories at dinner. According to the study published in the Journal of Obesity, the large dinner group only lost an average of three, uh, 7.3 pounds, which is 3.3 kilos over, over the same time. So these people ate the same amount of calories Calories didn't change the same amount. One ate more in the morning, the other one ate more at night. Which one does that sound like you? Probably the night one. You probably eat more at night. They probably reduced their calories so they can lose weight in this study. Reduced. So the one that ate more in the morning lost eight kilos over three months. The one that ate more at night only lost 3.3 kilos. That is a difference of 4.7 4.7 kilos. That is dramatic. So what does this tell us? It tells us our body prefers food in the morning. Our body does not prefer food at night. We're not supposed to be eating at night. We are supposed to be eating in the morning. Okay, this is just one study. This is just about weight loss, but it just shows our body is designed to eat food in the morning and not at night. So I'm not here saying skip dinner, but maybe I am kind of leading towards that because I'm not, I'm I'm saying do not skip breakfast, okay? Well, an interesting fact is is also, I also spoke about what fasting does to people's, uh, to female hormones in my latest What Would I Do video. Check it out here. It's up here somewhere. (laughs) Click on it and you'll be able to learn a bit more about how, what happens to the female hormones when you do fast, right? But remember, I am not talking about any breakfast. Do not have, when you, you know, when you're having breakfast, don't just have any breakfast. I'm talking about a good quality, well balanced, high vitamin, mineral breakfast, right? So, when considering the major factor leading to a health benefits of breakfast consumption, it could be argued that the influential influence of type of food on blood glucose level may be the most important point. So, that's ensuring that our blood glucose doesn't just go up and just doesn't crash, right? Since low and slow glucose release, low and slow, is believed to keep the energy level balanced, preventing energy dips as well as highs, right? The beneficial of a low glycemic index and low food include improved glucose and lipid metabolism, right? And they can also increase long-term sedative, feeling full or for longer, reduce hunger, and lower subsequent voluntary food intake. They also argue that, the study also argues that low glycemic Index low foods are capable of keeping blood glucose levels lower and stable during the course of the whole day, and thus this could be expected to further add to the beneficial effects of breakfast, providing an ideal nutritional start in the morning, right? So what I was saying is here is 
If you do end up skipping breakfast, you may be at a risk of having issues with your hormones. You may be at a risk of weight gain. You may be at a risk of memory loss. You may be at a risk of heart disease, even death. You may be at a risk of diabetes. These are just some of the things that I've mentioned. There are so many more, right? But then if you do have breakfast, if you decide not to skip your breakfast, you need to ensure that this is a well-balanced breakfast, low glycemic index, low foods, which will keep you maintained energy for the whole day, right? Let's get into the most important part, which is why you're here, right? Three quick, easy, and healthy breakfast ideas. Increased protein intake has also been discovered to be associated with improved glycemic response, resulting in balanced energy levels and protein content in a meal is considered to be key for satiation and appetite regulation so this is the key to have protein in your breakfast also fat and carbohydrates but a lot of people just miss out on that protein because what is the you know the preferred breakfast cereal milk where's your protein there where, where is that protein you may argue there's some in the milk or some of that cereal i can argue against that and say yes but it's not not adequate enough right so number one quick easy and simple breakfast ideas a protein shake you may be looking at me like what do you support protein shakes yes i do support protein shakes for busy women right i do support protein shakes for busy women because a protein shake is a good quality with a good quality plant-based protein organic plant-based protein with enzymes in it um minerals vitamins is an ideal addition with vegetables also included some greens is an ideal start an energy start it provides you with the bam the protein the carbohydrates the fats if you put some hemp seeds some seeds in there so uh, maybe one two three serves of vegetables there it is easily digestible inside you and it will not spike that glucose level right you need to ensure that this protein shake is filled with all the goodies in it and it's quick and easy chuck it on the blender you, you put it on while you're brushing your teeth and that's it right done number two is a chia seed pudding with seeds and nuts you probably heard about chia puddings the reason why i love it is because it is so quick and easy and you can do it the night before night before well you should probably do it the night before you mix the chia seeds and whatever else you put in there in a little um, recyclable glass container of one of your tomato jars that you use the pasta sauces right put it in there and in the morning you just take it out of the fridge best at all you do three or four and you have them ready for you monday tuesday wednesday done boom 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 you're not skipping breakfast you're having let's say you're putting linseeds walnuts pumpkin seeds because they're a rich source of omega-3s in addition to a favorable fatty acid profile they're a good protein source nuts and peanuts are also contain cardio protective nutrients instead of that you know causing card, uh, cardiovascular disease um, and you're also going to have fiber you're going to have potassium calcium magnesium and so forth because you're going to put in there you're going to put chia seeds you're going to put um you're going to put linseeds, seeds walnuts pumpkin seeds maybe even some peanut butter if you want some cinnamon some organic plant-based milk that has limited additives and preservatives and so forth in it and there you go bam third one nice and simple boiled eggs also you could also do that the night before boil eggs put them in the fridge have some boiled eggs and what you can also do is you can also add some with the boiled eggs, you can have some avocado or you can have it on rice crackers with avocado. Put it on there, some nuts and seeds on top. You can also just have the the egg and put some hummus on it maybe. Um, the, the choice is absolutely yours. It's an absolutely great source of protein, vitamins, um, iodine, and easy, it's absolutely easy to prepare. It's an absolutely good source of uh, trypto. To, tri and which is required for serotonin um, boiled eggs are absolutely amazing and quick and easy to do so there you have it i give you three There's so many but this is three simple and easy quick breakfast ideas for you regular consumption of breakfast is associated with a range of benefits in us women also men but i'm talking about women here including more adequate intake of macro and micronutrients lower body mass index higher cognitive performance and better levels of well-being and quality of life there you have it how what can happen to you if you skip breakfast i hope that tomorrow you do not skip breakfast and you remember mahala said eat your breakfast and make sure it's a good quality 
breakfast. If you know someone who will benefit from this episode, this podcast, please share this with them. Leave a comment below and let me know what is your favorite breakfast idea and get in touch with me at mahela.raguz on Instagram. If you have any questions or want to let me know what your favorite breakfast idea is. So do what you do best. Love, like, share, rate, review the Natural Health Podcast. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe. Until next Monday, love you. 